Jim Rohn say that human beings are the only life form who can change the course of their life at any given time. Everything else operates under instinct and the genetic code. For example, the goose. <laughs> the goose flies south in the winter. And you might ask, how often? Well, the answer is every winter. Even if you said, hey, this year it would be best if you flew west. <laughs> the goose ignores that advice because he cannot make choices. He only operates under instinct and the genetic code but not human beings. Do you know we can live one way for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, and then all of a sudden tear up that script and live a completely different life. In fact, write this down. You're not a goose. <laughs> you can change your life anytime you decide to. Hey, I'm Deary Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Let me ask you, would you have ever believed that raspy rock and roller Rod Stewart once had a job as a grave digger in a London cemetery? Or that actor Hugh Jackman once worked as a gym teacher and moonlighted as a party clown <laughs> for $50 a gig? What about the stunning Transformers actor Megan Fox? She used to dress up in a banana suit to advertise a smoothie shop. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because today I want to reveal to you three vital steps to basically tearing up that old script and seeing your dreams come to life. You know, just as those three celebrities I mentioned, their dreams seem utterly impossible. Yours probably seem totally unachievable. You know, paying off your debt, getting healthy again, starting your own ministry or business, getting the house you dream of or the job you really want. You don't know how God can do it. You don't know the right people. You don't have the finances. You don't have the right connections or opportunities being handed to you. All you know is that God has more for your life. Well, I want to share with you what God expects you to do from the word of God to resurrect a dead dream and to bring impossible dreams to life. You know, every December... I update my vision board for the new year. I remove the dreams I've achieved and I start adding new ones. Well, last year I had on my vision board to, you know, it was a bunch of stuff like write a devotional, to sell our house, to pay off our land before we build our dream home, which looked utterly impossible, um, to reach my goal physically, to take my icing women's conference on the road to a new city. I mean, I could go on and on. Well, I updated the vision board and then COVID happened, and most of my dreams looked ridiculous. I mean, how do you pay off your land when everything was closing and my husband's company was completely shut down? How do I take my icing women's conference to another state when venues aren't even open? And some people were afraid to travel or couldn't travel. It's probably not the time to rent a conference center and have a women's event. <laughs> well, right when I was looking over my ridiculous and impossible dreams, I felt like I was just aiming way too high with my goals and I was just about to reduce them a little bit, like scale back a little. Like instead of paying off our land, what if we paid off 20% of it? I mean, that's still reaching a goal, right? Well, at that very moment, I clearly heard the Lord speak seven words to me that not only changed me, but it changed my entire outcome that year. He simply said, don't shrink your dream, enlarge your faith. Let me repeat that. Don't shrink your dream, enlarge your faith. So right then and there, I chose to obey what I felt God told me to do, even though I don't have a clue how these dreams would ever be achieved. Well, the Lord led me through, I call it like a seven step checklist, so to speak, to achieve my dreams. And I put it all in this brand new little book right here. So it's just easy to read and take the action steps. Just do it, which I promise in just a minute, I'm going to show you how to get this book. But real quick, I want to go over a few of them right now. Number one, the Lord reminded me to put my dreams and goals in writing, which I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but he reminded me to dream as big as I can. Now, let me remind you that everything we begins with your ability to envision your ideal future. Like just imagine what would be the greatest year to you and conceive that image on the inside. Like when you just sit quietly with God, 
you should be able to see more with your eyes closed than you do when your eyes are open. If it makes you just breathe deep and think, oh, this is big. I mean, this looks impossible. Good, you're on the right track. You know, if you've heard me for any length of time, you know I'm passionate about not leaving your goals in your head, but actually getting them down on paper, on a vision board. In fact, your chance of success increases by 44% just by this simple act, where you just literally grab a pen and some paper and you write down what you're believing for. You may have heard that phrase. If it's not on paper, it's a vapor, right? Well, every successful person I've studied or known understands this vital principle that came from God's word. Write the vision, make it plain, right? Habakkuk 2.2. But here's the other clue. Don't be vague or haphazard about your prayers and dreams. You know, I love what the late Kenneth Hagin used to say. He said he would see people praying at the altar and he would just gently tap them on the shoulder and he'd say, sweetheart, what are you praying for? What are you praying about? He said so many times people would say, oh, nothing in particular. He'd say, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Nothing in particular. So what I'm saying is be clear on what you're asking God for. That's number one, right? Number two, the Lord reminded me, declare what you believe. Declare what you believe. See, this is how you release your faith is with your words, right? In other words, if you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Well, in prayer, when the Lord led me through this checklist and number two was declare what you believe, this is what I heard in prayer. The Lord said to me, if you're not going to speak faith, don't speak at all. If you're not going to speak faith, don't speak at all. In other words, shut it up, right? Well, not trying to be tacky, but the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. In other words, your words matter. You know, James Clear wrote a book and he was explaining how, um, he was explaining things like this. He said, imagine two people resisting a cigarette. One person says, no, thank you. I'm trying to quit. Now that sounds reasonable, but this person still sees themselves as a smoker who's trying something, but their identity is a smoker trying to be something else. The second person declines the cigarette by saying, no, thanks. I'm not a smoker. Now that sounds like a minor change, but it's major because they have already decided on a new identity, even though they're still in the process of changing. So saying I'm not a smoker is a significant change in identity, right? So what they're declaring is smoking is a part of my former life. It's not my current identity. Well, you have to do the same thing with your new identity and with your dreams. See, what you believe about yourself on the inside is what you will manifest on the outside. I'm sure you've heard the old saying from Henry Ford. He says, whether you think you can or think you can't, either way, you're right. Well, whatever you tell yourself, that becomes your reality. So what I'm saying is you have to closely monitor what you say to yourself, because when you fill your mind with positive thoughts, your life is going to start to line up with it. You know, I've done this over every dream in my heart. When I wanted to one day, you know, write books and have a publisher, you know what I did? Every single time I would walk into a bookstore, I would point to the shelves and I would declare quietly. I'd say, my books are sold here in Jesus name every time. And you know what? I will never forget the day I walked in a Barnes and Noble and saw my books on the shelf. But you know what? It seemed natural because I saw it on the inside for years and I would declare it as if it was a reality. Well, it's the same with these offices that we have today. When I first opened my own offices, we could only afford this little section that looked like you were entering a janitor closet. I mean, it was just this black door. It had no lobby, no formal, magnificent entrance. It was just this long hallway with a black door. But we were so excited. We were so grateful. However, every time I would drive over the bridge and I could see the offices in the distance and I would see the big dome next to my office, my family can tell you, Every time I would point to the office complex and I would declare those offices belong to TSFM in Jesus name. And then every single morning, 
when I would walk by the fancy office that these wealthy guys had, they had the big chandelier and the marble floors and just beautiful. I would walk by and I would point to those offices, not so they could see me, but I would say, thank you, Jesus. Those offices belong to us. Well, do you know, out of nowhere, those guys, they had a three-year lease. Out of nowhere, they canceled their lease, packed up and moved out. Today, that fancy lobby is the entrance to our headquarters and that dome is my personal office. Isn't that amazing? See, it all boils down to this. You have the ability to change the entire direction of your life with that little thing under your nose, <laughs> your mouth. It's as simple as it seems. Successful people take a proactive approach to their dreams. They don't wait to see what happens. They prophesy their future. So when it comes to your dreams, talk like you already have what you're praying for. In fact, let me tell you the story real quick. This is in Luke 1 about an angel who appeared to Zechariah and said he was going to have a baby. And Zacharias said to the angel, are you sure? Do you know how old I am? And the angel said to him, because you doubted, you will remain silent and not speak until the baby is born. Do you know what the angel did? I just happen to have this. <laughs> he zipped his lip, literally. And yes, I have a giant zipper. I Googled it. <laughs> But think about it. He was completely silent, unable to speak until the child was born. So for nine months, he zipped his lip. Why would God take away his speech? Because he knew you are going to mess up the whole plan of God if I let you talk. Isn't that amazing? So let's go back to what the Lord said. If you're not going to speak faith, don't speak at all. And you know, I love what Joyce Meyer said. It's not enough to stop saying the wrong things. You've got to start saying the right things. So I want to challenge you. Change what you're saying and you'll change what you're seeing. Now, when we come back, I'm going to share one thing. It's my final point that will change everything. Watch this and I'll be right back. What do you do when your dreams are delayed or look like they'll never happen? You can shrink your dreams down to a level you can accomplish in your own power, or you can build your faith to a greater level and experience God's supernatural power to achieve them. In Don't Shrink Your Dream, Enlarge Your Faith, Terry Savelle Foy walks with you through seven powerful and practical keys that will shift your identity, remove the limitations, and enlarge your faith to receive from God. It's time to break through the barriers that have held you back for far too long so you can reach your goals and fulfill your purpose. For a limited time, Terry would like to send you a copy of this life-changing book as a thank you for your gift today. So don't delay. Go to terry.com or call 800-795-5597 to sow your memorable seed and request your copy. Now's not the time to reduce what you're believing for. With God's help, you can achieve every dream He's put in your heart. Go now to terry.com or call 800-795-5597. I can't even tell you how excited I am to have these seven steps in a book now. This is our brand new book and I made it quick and easy to read. It's a fun book. You're going to love it, but you're going to get right to the action steps. You know, God is the one who said faith without corresponding action is useless, right? Well, God led me through these seven steps and I'm telling you every single dream was achieved and in record time. Now I use it as sort of my checklist to make sure I'm obeying the word when it comes to believing for impossible things things. So you can get started now. If God is speaking to you that it's time for you to get serious about your dreams and changes you want to see in your life, then do it now. And again, we're giving this book away for your donation of any amount. But before you pick up the phone or go online to get your copy, I think you need to hear this final point. So just hold on a second because it has truly impacted me and our ministry. So the third thing the Lord told me in prayer to do when my dreams looked impossible was, number three, designate a memorable offering. Designate a memorable offering. Now, when the pandemic broke out and I was looking at everything that was canceled and how utterly impossible our goals looked, the Lord led me to Genesis chapter 26. Now, it says in verse 1, there was a famine in the land. Now, famine means shortage, lack, scarcity, poverty, undersupply, insufficiency. Does that sound familiar? 
exactly what we have gone through and still going through in some places. Well, when there was this massive famine in the land, verse 12 says what Isaac chose to do. It says, Isaac sowed seed in that land. Which land? The land of famine, but don't stop reading. It says, Isaac reaped in the same year, 100 fold what he had planted. Then it says, and the Lord blessed and favored Isaac. So think about it. He received 100 fold. How? Why did he experience so much increase in favor? Because he chose to sow seed during a famine. Well, on March 18th of 2020, when the virus was starting to break out and I'm hearing about all these things canceled and conferences and just looks like it's going to be the worst year ever. The first thing I told my team was the Lord said, don't shrink our dream, enlarge our faith. So I said, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're not going to change what we're believing for this year, even though we don't know how God's going to do it. So I went through the list, you know, we see ourselves achieving every dream God put in our hearts. We've, we've got our dreams and goals in writing. Number two, we started declaring Genesis 26, 12 over our ministry every single week as a team. And then I started doing it every single morning in prayer. And we went down the whole action list of steps. One was to keep our promise to ourselves, to be people of integrity. If we said we're going to do it, we do it. And then the fourth, well, the final one was we sowed a memorable seed. Well, just as Isaac sowed in famine, I thought about it and I said, this is the key to our breakthrough right here. So I told my team, I said, I want to get in on this Genesis 26, 12 right now. And remember the Lord said, make your offering memorable. In other words, you don't forget, right? Well, I'm not trying to be goofy about this, but I said, let's sow 26, 12, according to Genesis 26, 12 as our point of contact. So we chose the number 2,612 and we sowed that to several ministries, believe in God that in the same year, we are going to reap a hundredfold and we're going to walk in the favor of God, just like Isaac. So we sowed the seed. The next week, my CEO Isaiah said in the first week of April, he said the first week, our website surpassed the entire month of March. I said, what? And my next response was, let's get more seed in the ground. So we sowed another 2612, 2612, 2612, just obeying the Lord. Well, the month of May surpassed April. June broke records. July broke June's records. And 2020 was a record breaking year. During a famine. I'm telling you, 2020 was the greatest year our ministry has ever had, ever during a pandemic with dozens and dozens of conferences canceled, most of our plans not happening. And we broke records in reaching people and in revenue. How in the world do you describe that? Oh, and I forgot to tell you, we also launched our icing women's conference in a new city, just like we had planned during a pandemic. We went to Orlando, Florida, and it was sold out. Ladies flew in from across America, it was just overwhelming. And personally, my husband Rodney and I decided to do the same thing. We sowed our Genesis 26, 12 seed for our dreams. You know, the house that would not sell, it was on the market for eight months with no offers, not one offer. Well, we decided to sow Genesis 26, 12. We got two offers in one day and the house went up $25,000 and it was a cash offer. I'm telling you. And on August 22nd, we achieved our most impossible dream, which was we paid off our land that looked completely out of reach. I could go on and on, but let me just say, did you notice it says after Isaac sowed his seed in famine, the Lord blessed and favored him. You know, I started sharing these steps with our partners and our friends, and they started applying it. And then they started sowing 2612, 2612. In fact, I wanted to read a couple to you real quick because it's just amazing. I just had to pick two of them. This is from Carrie. 
She said, a few weeks ago, I sent my partnership gift and $26.12 for Genesis 26.12 as you were teaching. She says, praise the Lord. Before the seed was even in the ground, before the check was in the mail, she said, we were given $10,000. She shouts, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing from the Lord and sharing this revelation. I'm telling you, God is faithful when we sow in famine. Listen to Adele. She said, I just had to tell you our Genesis 26, 12 testimony. We sowed $261 and 20 cents and got a car. Then she wrote, got a car given to us. Are you ready for this? Worth $26,000. I love that. Is that amazing? So this is not something I came up with. This is a revelation from heaven. There is an anointing on this principle from God's word. So I want to encourage you today. Get your Genesis 26, 12 seed in the ground. Sow seed in famine and watch what God will do. Whether it's $2.61, $26.12, $261, might even be $26,000. Here's what I discovered. The Lord said, give something memorable. See, I want you to have the kind of increase in favor like Isaac, like my team, like our ministry, like Carrie and Adele and those who are experiencing harvest in a time of famine. But you can't have a harvest if you don't sow a seed, right? So I want to encourage you, give where God leads you to give. Maybe it's to your local church. Maybe it's to a friend in need, to a single parent or someone who lost their job. You know, maybe God does lead you to give to our ministry. And if so, with your gift of any amount, don't forget, I'm going to sow right back into you. Because this week I'm giving away my brand new book, Don't Shrink Your Dream, Enlarge Your Faith. And I believe this book is going to walk you through the seven steps that you've been just asking the Lord What's missing? What do I need to do? This is going to give you the action step. So if God's speaking to you, it's simple to just call the number on the screen or go online to give your Genesis 26, 12 seed, and we will get this sent out today. You know, I'm just believing that you're going to have a breakthrough in your life like you've never had before. In fact, I'd like to read one more testimony to you, if that's okay, because this one, I just read this this morning. It is amazing. This is from a lady named Esme. And it says, at your icing conference, you shared about Genesis 26, 12. You explained what that meant. And so I donated, she's from England. I donated 26 pounds, 12 pence to your ministry. I thank God for the hundredfold return on the donation. She said, I didn't pray about it after that. I forgot about it, she said. But then recently, I think just over a week ago, you mentioned Genesis 26, 12 again on your podcast. She said, so I asked God, did I ever receive the hundredfold on that giving? I wasn't aware of anything, but I didn't look for it either. She said, God immediately asked me if I checked our bank account recently. What has been in our bank account for the last couple of months was twice the amount of my husband's and my monthly wages combined at the end of each month. She said, not only that, Despite the lockdown, our investments are doing very well. She said, I know this is God's doing and his hundredfold return on that giving as he reminded me. She said, I could not stop thanking him, but that's not it. I thought the testimony was over. Listen to this. She says, that's not all, Terry. After I realized that God had blessed me with a hundredfold return on that giving, God asked me to do it again. He told me to sow 260, 12. I immediately did that. She said, I thanked God every day for this Genesis 26, 12 blessing. Today, she says, my hubby told me that we will be getting money due to work he did in 2019 that he was never paid for. When he told me the amount, I knew it was God's hundredfold return. She said, I started shouting, thank you, Jesus. She said, Terry, my husband is getting over 200,000 pounds. He has never received this kind of money and it's all because of God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Can you just say I'm next? I'm telling you, God is so faithful when we do what he tells us to do. But I want to encourage you right now because you may feel that, that urge in you where you're saying, I want to get seed in the ground. And if you feel that, that's God prompting you just obey. Because the Lord told me, he said, prompt obedience produces a prompt harvest. So if that's you, 
obey what God's telling you to do. Call the number on the screen, go online, give your Genesis 26, 12. Here's what we discovered. If it means something to you, it means something to God. If you just throw money in a bucket and you don't even care, it doesn't mean anything to you, it doesn't mean anything to God. But when you sow seed that stretches you, that's memorable seed. Well, let me just tell you this, because some of you, you may be feeling that saying, I'm going to get my seed in the ground. I'm going to start declaring Genesis 26, 12. But I want to give you a clue. I told somebody this this morning because they told me last night they sowed the biggest seed they had ever sown because they wanted it to be memorable. I said, let me just warn you because the devil comes immediately to steal the word and he's going to try to discourage you and tell you that was the dumbest thing you could have ever done. But you know how you get the devil back? with praise and worship. You just start praising God and thanking Him before the breakthrough. Praise is the highest expression of your faith in God. In fact, the Lord said, don't shrink your dream, enlarge your faith. Well, the highest expression of faith is just start praising God. Not only does that open doors for God to move in your life, but it is the biggest slap in the devil's face. <laughs> and I love slapping him, don't you? So I want to encourage you right now, if God leads you to sow your seed, as soon as the seed is in the ground, just start praising and worshiping God as if your breakthrough has already happened. And let me close out with this statement the Lord said to me, as soon as I sowed my biggest seed and I was breathing hard and going, oh Jesus, I hope I've heard from the Lord. I heard this in prayer. The Lord said, the moment the seed left your hand, I released what's in mine. The moment the seed leaves your hand, God releases what's in His. So go ahead and thank Him for it. I'm cheering you on to live your dreams. What do you do when your dreams are delayed or look like they'll never happen? You can shrink your dreams down to a level you can accomplish in your own power, or you can build your faith to a greater level and experience God's supernatural power to achieve them. In Don't Shrink Your Dream, Enlarge Your Faith, Terry Savelle Foy walks with you through seven powerful and practical keys that will shift your identity, remove the limitations, and enlarge your faith to receive from God. It's time to break through the barriers that have held you back for far too long so you can reach your goals and fulfill your purpose. For a limited time, Terry would like to send you a copy of this life-changing book as a thank you for your gift today. So don't delay. Go to terry.com or call 800-795-5597 to sow your memorable seed and request your copy. Now's not the time to reduce what you're believing for. With God's help, you can achieve every dream He's put in your heart. Go now to terry.com or call 800-795-5597. Make plans now to be a part of the 2023 Faith Building Event with Terry Savelle Foy, along with Bill Winston, Lisa Osteen Combs, Brad Price Jr., Richard Roberts, Pat Harrison, and George and Terry Pearson. It's a day dedicated to build your faith for the big dreams God's given you, especially if you're believing for breakthroughs with houses, land, properties, or to be debt free. And when you register for this free live stream event, be sure to send in your faith building prayer requests and your seed to be prayed over in the live studio. It's all happening Tuesday, November 14th. Register today at terry.com and join us for this free one of a kind virtual faith building event. This special day is more than just inspiration. It's about transformation. You'll receive biblical insights and practical steps to take your faith to the next level. Remember, your faith can move mountains. See you on November 14th.